Okay, looks like we have our last presentation uh, on the docket here. I will butcher this name. Uh, so, in fact, what would be even better uh, if if you introduce yourself? Uh, I so can that... certainly do that. <laughs> oh, perfect. That's wonderful. Thanks, anyway. So, my name is Levent, you guys. Uh, you can find me under those names on, on OSM and on X. I won't pronounce those, but you can all copy it. So, anyway, so I brought a little experiment today. I am wearing my researcher hat. So, this is a little experiment that, that we are trying to design just to kind of like uh, give a different perspective into mapping. Um, but before that, I would like to acknowledge that I am talking from South Florida, um, which is the traditional homelands of native nations, including the Takesta, Kalusa, and today the sovereign homelands of the Seminole and the Misosuke, and they have stewarded this land throughout the generations. All right, so I can't really take all of the credit for this talk. Um, this has largely originated from conversations uh, with Yair Greenberger. You might know him. He's one of the main organizers behind uh, OSM Science that was previously known as the academic track as uh, state of the map. And also we have a new collaborator, Ahmed, who's interested in data uh, uh, analysis. So I'm going to start with just a little bit introduction, kind of like a motivation as to like what triggered this little experiment. Uh, so OpenStreetMap, you know, everyone knows, founded in 2004. And luckily there has been a lot of research attention going into this topic. So from the very early ages, uh, uh, we like knew a lot about positional accuracy. Obviously people were interested in figuring out whether the, the accuracy of this new data set is, is good enough for different applications. Then a lot of effort went into trying to like quantify completeness, like how complete the, the data set is, like whether it's being roads or buildings and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, a, a very interesting study, actually, a couple uh, uh, years ago, uh, it estimated that uh, the global completeness of the road coverage was over 80% at uh, that time, which was like fascinating if you think about the, the collaborative process that, that goes behind mapping. Anyway, so we've been looking at all these studies scientifically and we realized that like, okay, okay, there's like a lot of research going into this, but like most of them only consider the data. So we did a little literature review. Uh, we had over uh, 200 research articles, I think a couple of years ago. And, you know, we, we were interested in like evaluating them in, into uh, like different categories. But we also looked at like how these researchers look at the OpenStreetMap data sets, whether it is they just see it as a data source or whether they are trying to interact with the community, uh, whether they acknowledge that it's actually a project that's created by humans. And what we saw that the, the large majority of, of the research that went into OpenStreetMap just considered it as a data source. So they might uh, uh, acknowledge that like, hey, the raw data in this study is from OpenStreetMap, which is great, but we think that understanding the, the data that we are all using, uh, in order to do that, we also need to understand the community that's behind this data. Um, luckily, there has also been a lot of research going into understanding users. So, for example, we know that most of the contributions are uh, geographically limited because people tend to map their own areas, their own city, state, and so on and so forth. Uh, some researchers also try to categorize mappers into categories. So we know that some people are interested in trails and hiking. Others are more interested in mapping systematically. So like they design their surveys accordingly. Um, there's also a map that I included in this slide at the at the bottom uh, uh, right. We, we kind of I want to show that if we look at the contributions, we also see like artificial patterns, rather like. Uh, people usually tend to map their uh, uh, countries if we think about it internationally, which again has some some cultural aspect to how mapping is is taking place. Uh, we also know um, uh, that corporations grew a lot of interest in into mapping OpenStreetMap. Uh, you are probably all familiar with Jennings Anderson and, and his work into like bringing this uh, topic into the mainstream and like raising attention uh, to it, um, which is great. So there's a lot of research going into OpenStreetMap, even from the community perspective. But there's a really big gap between uh, well, behind like data intensive studies that use mapping data just to kind of like uh, uh, quantify the community. So we are proposing to, to look at the community through a different lens. And we, we think that it would be beneficial to, to look at data that cannot be captured through just analyzing map edits. Um, we also know that OpenStreetMap is, is built from self-organizing communities. So like today, uh, during this conference, we are part of a self-organizing uh, community in the US. 
And you also know that these communities use uh, collaborative tools like Wiki, the Slack channels, uh, listservs, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so we are looking at actually two of these examples, mailing lists that are traditionally the main communication channels behind organizing OpenStreetMap. And we are also planning to look at wikis. And I'm going to show you uh, what I mean with this. So if you think about the mailing list, uh, I brought an example of the Talk US uh, channel. Uh, the archives are freely available online. Uh, they have the standardized, standardized inbox format, uh, so they can be processed programmatically. And if we do that, we can extract users, we can extract uh, threads, uh, topics uh, that uh, are basically collections of, of uh, emails around the same topic. Um, and so on and so forth. So I, there's an example about uh, G-tagging railroads after a merger, um, and we can look at pretty much the same information on Wiki, which is a huge source of information and, and, and knowledge that, that's actually not lost because there's an option to view the history. Um, so if you look at that, then we can reconstruct a timeline of who edited what, whether it was an addition, whether it deleted something, whether it was just like fixing a typo. Uh, so we believe that there's a lot of value in looking at these data sources. Um, so we are planning to do just that. Uh, we are uh, proposing to, uh, to do this experiment. Um, we can get the data through the media wiki uh, software. It has an API. Uh, as I mentioned, the mail mails are are downloadable in this M box format, which is which has been around since the 80s, I believe. So you know, there's like a software architecture, like you know, ecosystem behind that. Um, so we are collecting the data. We are aggregating everything by country because we recognize that OpenStreetMap is built from local communities. Uh, we aggregate the data by month, and we are looking at this time frame just just for starter. We are extracting variables like the number of emails, number of unique threads, users who sent emails. Uh, it's pretty much the same for for wikis as well. Number of pages that have been edited, uh, number of regions, uh, the size of those edits, and so on and so forth. Um, for map mapping variables, you know the usual number of changes, number of change sets, users, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is where we are right now. Uh, I don't have any results to to share. Uh, I took a quick look at the data. You know, it's noisy as expected. Uh, so we need to conduct some some analysis. We need to like decompose the the time series and st uh, stuff like that. But we think that it's a promising direction for the future. And you know, these are the questions that we are interested in. We think that it's a novel way to to understand community dynamics that are are going on in OpenStreetMap. Um, and we can answer, uh, we can figure out whether like, you know, the community active is a good proxy for mapping activity. Uh, we can maybe like, you know, go a couple of steps further and we can say things whether increased social act, uh, activity uh, online results in better data quality. Uh, maybe we will be able to like uh, uh, scientifically suggest new contributor types. If you think about like serving on the board, uh, uh, some, you know, if, if you take a lot of like organizational uh, stuff on, on, on you, then you might not have enough time to do hands-on mapping, but you know, still a good contribution. So in short, this is still going to be a data-driven study, study, but we would like to make it community-centric. Uh, so if you have any any feedback, please uh, you know reach out to me in OpenStreetMap email. I forgot to put my email address on it, but I think you can Google my name. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you, Levente.